I give myself very good advice, but I very seldom take it. I give myself my most solemn word, but I fear I often break it. I don't know why it's so hard for me to behave the way I should be. Good morning. Uh, it's Friday, the third of September, and welcome to hopefully will be my first ever vlog. I thought it'd be fun to make some nice, chill, relaxing, hopefully arty content for you. As is probably to be expected for one's first ever foray into the vlogosphere, I did an absolutely horrible and awkward job at explaining to you what will be happening in this video. So here I am again, coming back to you as a disembodied voice to hopefully set things right. If everything goes well, this should be the first of a series in which I will be documenting my life one month at a time, starting with September 2021, which is the video you're watching now. There'll be a fair bit of drawing. I participated or attempted to participate in an art challenge, some DIY fun. I even went out at one point. What? <laughs> but first thing first, I've got to finish packing and doing the last delivery run for my Etsy shop before I have to close the shop down. I call it my tiny Lady Dimitrescu goes to Woodstock, open bracket, Alice trying desperately to soak up the last days of this heat wave, close bracket. Did my delivery, and while I was in town, I also picked this up. <gasps> it's hard to do with one hand. Dear birdies, please take this peace offering and stop pooping on all of my garden furniture. Okay, this is my offering to thee. So, it is Sunday, and yesterday I had to write a really difficult email turning down probably the coolest job I've ever been offered because the project would have taken too long and I will have to switch over to my student visa halfway through it and I'm not allowed to work on my student visa well I'm not allowed to be self-employed on my student visa so I cannot take a job and a job is so freaking cool and I was really upset so I spent the whole of yesterday being a mopey little bastard. <laughs> and today, the sun came out for the first time in like forever. So we're gonna head out and try to embrace this last bit of summer. <laughs> As I watch the morning tonight And sweep away all the crumbs of the night I'm trying to summon my logical but they aren't used to being awake at these hours Your hair smells like the sea Your skin tastes like cream It was an unsuccessful <laughs> trip, we couldn't find any rugs Arr, Have to look online I guess But we did get a blanket and some more violas because I am obsessed with violas. Right, I'm gonna go plant these and enjoy the rest of my very sunny Sunday. <laughs> Smells like 
like the sea. Your skin tastes like cream. Oh, that one. That one's right. Your ears are perfection. Your mouth is confection. All that you do deserves. So, in a stunning turn of events, I was just minding my own business, and I got a phone call from BBC Radio Shropshire. And long story short, it appears that I'm going to be on the BBC Radio next Wednesday, talking about myself and my life and my art and all that. So, I've fa- I've just found this out half an hour ago. So. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Good morning. It is seven thirty on Tuesday, the seventh of September. And I will be going into Birmingham to go to university for my MA course for the first time. Did I mention that I was doing an MA course? Yeah, I'm doing an MA course. The weather is still very lovely. We're having a tiny little heat wave here at the end of the summer, and gives me an opportunity to wear one of my cute little dresses that I don't get to wear very often because I don't go anywhere. <laughs> Oh yeah, one thing I forgot to say. The thing that I'm most excited for about going to Birmingham every week from now on is the food. I love Shrewsbury. It's a lovely little town, but the downside with being a tiny little town is the food selection is not the tea. <laughs> And speaking of tea, I miss boba so much. <laughs> I'm so excited. I have, but what I want is what I need, and what I need to keep your love from going to seed is very simple, hardly worth a mention. I just need your undivided attention. If I can get it without extra pain from the man who does my hair, then it should come. No boba. Color me absolutely devastated. But I did manage to get an onigiri and a dorayaki, so that's gummy for breakfast. So, yeah, I've just finished my enrollment process. Uh, after getting a little bit lost in Birmingham, I found a university. I've done my enrollment. I had a little look at the buildings and all that, and I'll be honest, it's a little bit intimidating because um, I'm very. I, I was born and raised in the biggest city in Vietnam, but I'm still very much a. Small town girl at heart, and Birmingham City is very big, very modern, very impressive, and all those things scare me. I am more of a quaint and old kind of person. This will be interesting. Even back when I was doing my BA. My bachelor's degree. I studied in Cambridge, and Cambridge is a decent-sized city. But and yeah, and then the Ruskin is also a very reasonably state-of-the-art modern university. But even then, I went to Cambridge School of Art inside Anglia Ruskin, 
which is the oldest, quaintest, most antiquated building of the entire university. We even have like a separate entrance that was the back that takes you directly to the Cambridge School of Art building and it's just so lovely and sweet and it was right next to a graveyard. It was very homey. And this, this mama is a big city and I am intimidated but also quite excited I'll be pushing my boundaries this is a big step and I'm also very very happy that I will not be living in Birmingham full-time I'll be living in Shrewsbury and then commuting to Birmingham I was a bit apprehensive about that because it's an hour train ride but having seen Birmingham very happy that that's what I'll be doing because I don't think I can live here I think it'd be way too overwhelming I think it'd be very cool to be studying here and get a taste of it but I'm glad that I will still have my comfy tiny tiny town to go home to it's Thursday the 9th we are officially a third of the way through September and I finally found some time to try to do something for the lunar quartz and the weather looks really nice right now so let's go I found my new love He's this month Four of my favorite artists on Instagram, Archu, Lois Hanna, Irma, and Nadia Rosa, started a little drawing challenge called the Hashtag Lunar Quartz, in which there are three prompts, crescent moon, full moon, and lunar eclipse. You can interpret it however we want, with some additional words to inspire, like raven, tarot, blood, prey, wolf, harvest, honey, and shadow. And I thought that sounds super fun, very fitting for it being the harvest festival around this time as well so i thought i would give it a go and i may or may not have bitten off way more than i could chew <laughs> i tried to work on this on and off whenever i get a bit of time during the month but as you will see that is not exactly how it ended up playing out <laughs> check out my fit this is the coolest t-shirt I have ever owned. So it looks like I'll be going to uni next Thursday for induction into the course, which is exciting. What is not exciting is they've just sent me an email with a pre-arrival task and it is the worst thing in the world. <laughs> it goes, as introduction to your fellow students and tutors, we would like you to create a piece of work that expresses who you are, where you come from, and what your aspirations are. It might be interesting to explore the following questions. How have I changed in the last 12 months? What has happened with the planet? What I discovered about myself that I didn't know last year? How I can use my knowledge and skills to help reshape the future? so much <laughs> i understand that as an illustrator as an artist everything i do contains a bit of myself i put a bit of myself into everything that i make so in essence every drawing everything that i do is to a certain degree autobiographical that is fine i'm fine with that but for some bloody reason Whenever I'm set a task to do something where the subject begins and ends with me? <laughs> what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? Procrastinate by putting a run on the stairs, of course. Duh.
Okay, back to work. The concept that I ended up going with is inspired by a lot of the work I saw during lockdown. There were a lot of illustrations with a little graphic frame of a house, and inside, a giant person is stuck and looking all crammed inside their home, which I guess reflects a lot of what people felt during lockdown: being stuck in their home, feeling like they got nowhere to go, feeling uncomfortable. I remember feeling a bit weird for not relating to those illustrations because I don't feel trapped inside my own home. I actually quite enjoy spending time by myself in my little warm nook. That's actually my preferred state of being. So I thought it'd be fun to do an illustration in which there's that frame of the house, but. Inside it are all of the things I love, and I'm actually really happy and comfy inside it. And the challenge actually comes from when it is time to step out of it. So I drew myself as a little witch in my favorite outfit, nervous but excited to step out of the comfort zone and space that I have established for myself. I also have a line of text that runs around and frames the illustration, and it reads, "When the time came, the little witch found that she has grown so comfortable that freedom seems more daunting than exciting, but still, adventure awaits." And I think it sums up my current frame of mind pretty well. I'm quite happy with how this turned out. <sighs> Hello. It's Thursday, the sixteenth, and it's the first proper day of uni. Woo! First impressions are very important, which is why I have come dressed as my authentic self, so that my classmates get an accurate read for what they're having to deal with for the next year or so. Oh, go to Zarnetsu. Oh, so I'm Josh, by the way. Oh, uh, hi. And, hi. Uh, we're just out and about, it's one of, I guess, meet new people. Oh, and, nice. And uh, we're a Christian based um, like, group around this campus. Right. Well, across like all Birmingham, but yeah, so hi. would you have a deal with yourself? Or... Um, yeah, I'm Alice. I've just started in a visual communication. I'm personally atheist. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> How come, like, is it never. It's just, um,. Five minutes later. Real talk here. I kind of had to start vlogging and go to uni because I can't believe I'm serving looks like these just to go to the post office. I mean, the people of Shrewsbury are so lucky and they don't even know it. I mean, look at this. Cottage core homes. <laughs> That's officially obnoxious. Yeah, that's officially obnoxious. I'm fitting into this vlogging scene very well. <laughs> so I finally treated myself to Townscaper on the Switch and I'm having way too much fun. You have been no trouble to me. I've been as happy as a mango on a mango tree. The perfect mix of angel and devil. So I'm just gonna lay it all right on. I think this might have been my first night out in like three years. The boyfriend's brother and cousin have a band. That's them rocking out on stage there. They had a very, very good set. We also met up with some other members of his fam. <laughs> it was nice seeing other people. Surreal, but lovely. <laughs> Oh, and the 
rest of the night was very good too. Any club that plays this. And this. Ranks well in my heart. <laughs> so, we're supposed to go out for a dinner with the boyfriend's fam today and I've invited everyone to come back around to us for mooncakes because it's harvest festival and I want mooncakes and I miss home and I invited everyone around for mooncakes and then I ordered some mooncakes and they cancelled on me last minute <laughs> All that's to say, we have mooncake, baby! Yay! They're all, they're all lotus seed mooncakes because uh, Jeff Bezos only had the lotus seed mooncakes. It's not my favorite flavor of mooncake. My favorite flavor of mooncake is a flavor of mooncake that absolutely no one else is like. It's the roast chicken, my Vietnamese people. Roast chicken mooncake. It's the best mooncake. But of all the sweet mooncake, Lotus Flower is the best. It's much better than red bean. Red bean can go do one. I'm most excited for the salted egg. Haven't had salted eggs in years. Yeah! I'm so excited! You don't like egg, George. No. <laughs> you can take the egg out. Uh, yeah, you can. You feel free to take the egg out. It's fine. Yeah, like genuinely, when I used to have this when I was little, I would find like the sweet bit a bit too sickly, and I would just like pick the egg out. It amazes me that the egg stayed yeah. fresh. Yeah. No, it's, it's not that bad. Oh, oh, yeah. Don't be in any hurry. <laughs> It's still a little bit though. Light, light, quite nice. Yeah. Light, 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 light. yeah. I looked at mine. It's said to do it. Because like, 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 he said, oh, three or four days, yeah. do it. I was like, do I like it? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> funny how I started this month's vlog going oh I'll be doing the Luna Accords drawing challenge and I'll frame the whole vlog around me doing the drawing challenge and it's now Monday the 20th and I still haven't drawn a single one of them yay but I guess this is like a good opportunity to sort of like shed some light on the hashtag reality of being an illustrator, artist, full-time or whatever because life gets in the way man life gets in the way you want to be drawing but just there's just so much other adult shit I gotta do <laughs> like for example this month is a very interesting month to start vlogging on because it's a bit of a transitional month for me I'm transitioning from being a full-time working illustrator to being a full-time uh, MA student. It's a lot of paperwork, a lot of running around, a lot of things. It's also a transitional time of year. We're transitioning into autumn and a lot of things happen. Garden, just want to enjoy the day and all that. Just life, life stuff in general. I know illustrators and artists who cannot sit still without drawing like you sit them down and if they're not doing anything for like a minute their hands will immediately start doodling it's like automatic they can't stop it they need to be drawing at all times and i definitely do know people like that looking at you bridey <laughs> and they're really awesome when i was back at uni I used to feel massive imposter syndrome and it made me feel really insecure because it made me feel like oh, I'm not a proper artist, I'm not a proper illustrator because I don't have that inherent need to be constantly drawing and yeah I was really really insecure about that. Anyway, it is a stereotype of artists that we are constantly doodling, constantly drawing and when you don't fit into a mold or a stereotype of what you are, it's it's an open door for imposter syndrome. But yeah, just want to sort of like 
Hopefully this is breaking the stereotype that we're drawing all the time. And if you are an artist who aren't constantly drawing and you feel imposter syndrome because of it, don't. It's fine. It's absolutely, absolutely fine. <laughs> You are still a creative individual. You are still a maker. You are still an artist, even if you don't have a pencil scribbling in your hands at all times. If you do, good for you. If you don't, it's absolutely fucking fine. <laughs> My advice to fellow artists and creative people, you have your main practice, your main creative outlet, but try to also have other things that you can dedicate time to when you're not feeling your main thing. That's a good way to prevent burnout. By now, you probably would have figured out that there's a theme with this Lunar Quartz series. I really like small things. I really like big things. Giant godlike deities are some of my favorite things to draw. They're my comfort subjects. So we're going with three giant moon deities. Another running theme with my work, biting off way more than I can chew. <laughs> Spoiler alert, I'm not going to be able to finish these three drawings within this month. So you're just gonna have to tune in to next month to see how they look all inked up. Major apologies. But hey, I guess that's what this whole vlog situation is about. Honesty and transparency. When you see art on the internet, you just see it. You don't see the whole process. You don't know that it keeps getting interrupted and that a tiny project suddenly becomes a giant project and it cannot get finished and there are lots of time that you give it and uh, shit happens. <laughs> so yeah, tune in next month, hopefully. <laughs> to see how these babies turn out. I appreciate your concern When you say I've got a lot to learn You say one day the piper will have to get paid And all good things have got to end And I have been on a good thing bend You say, you know It's best to keep my expectations low But I've got my head in the clouds cooler than today's cool seat occupant. Alice Cow is an illustrator, but there's so much more than that. Uh, afternoon, Alice. Hello. Hello, Alice. Thank you so much for being in the cool seat. Oh, thank you for having radio. me. Um, uh, illustrator, but also resident mushroom witch, <laughs> among other things. <laughs> yes. You, you, even, you even say, oh, I start drawing things, and it turns out really strange. Yeah. Um, how, in, in, in what way, strange, for people who've not seen your work, just kind of tell us about the strangeness of it. Yeah, I think it's just, I think it, it comes, it, I think it originates from just things that excite me. Or for example, if I'm doing a personal project, if I'm like, no one's asked me to do it, is it just me drawing for myself, maybe for an audience, uh, that is like my base maybe I'll start drawing a portrait. I was like, oh, this is a lovely portrait. And then about like a little bit way through the sketching process, I was like, I'm kind of bored of this project. Let's put a dragon in. I'm kind of bored. Of this. Maybe she could be holding a skull. That'd be fun. I think that'd be fun. Oh, she's holding a skull now. Oh, what? How? Why is she holding a skull? Oh, maybe she's poisoned someone. Now she's holding a skull. Oh, then maybe you can make this project about poisonous flower and she could be a representation of poisonous flowers and that's why she's holding a skull so my brain just kind of 
go down those routes just to keep myself from being bored, if I'm honest. <laughs> <laughs> this, 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 it just kind of happens. The next, next thing, next thing you know, she's holding the skull of the person that she poisoned. You know, yeah, just it could be any kind of story. Yeah, it starts as an innocent portrait, and now it's a murderous widow. <laughs> um, you're, you're you're going on to do to do an MA, as, mm -hmm. as you mentioned. Um, what do you what what are your hopes hopes for the future, Ellie? Oh, um, my hopes for the future is um, my MA is currently in Birmingham City University, so I commute there every week, and it's in visual communication. So the course that I'm attending has like a mix of not just illustrators, but also graphic designers and photographers and filmmakers. And I think my hope is to see through the course, can I like develop ways in which I can apply my illustration can sort of like branch out. Maybe I can like dabble in what would my illustrations look like as animations perhaps. Um, can I learn more about typography and maybe start incorporating that into my work. Just expanding my arsenal of skills that I can use for future projects. Um, and uh, and uh, so, but Mushroom Look Studios, and they would take a quick look and uh, get on it, so you get there really quick. Yes. And also, uh, and, and you have to be in very green, you see someone with a uh, with a sketchbook or, or a sketch pad and a, and a hat that looks like a toadstool. <laughs> it's probably out of staff. Uh, Alice, it's been lovely talking to you. Thank you very much for, uh, for being on the call. See you at BBC Radio Plus.